So we will call the meeting of the Woodbury Select Board um, to order on Monday, October 28th, 2024 at 6 p.m. Any adjustments to the Select Board agenda? I'd like to ask for an executive session at the end of the meeting regarding personnel issues, one BSA 313A, three or four. Okay, thank you. Um, the next item is to approve the minutes from the October 4th meeting. Is there a motion from the board? Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Is there any discussion? I cleaned up that part about the, uh, who was gonna ask for the information on the mold report. It just sort of made yeah. it more vague. Diane, you send a message around saying it's October 14th, minute meeting, it's on the 4th. Yes, yes, I sent right. that right, found that right after the, yeah. right after I sent around the wrong, the one with the wrong date. So we are approving the minutes from October 14th. Yeah. Well, hearing no discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes and the minutes are approved. Thank you. Can I use your pen? Yes, my lens falling out of my pencil. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Robin. All right, our next item agenda is public comment. Um, and that's for anybody um, who would like to make, who isn't here on the, as an, for an agenda item or even members here would like to make a comment as a member of the public. Hearing none, we'll move on from that to our um, interview slash question session, you know, conversation or dialogue with Andrew Delaney um, about the position of town constable. Excuse me. Um, I think you at this point know almost more about it than we do. Um, it's possible. <laughs> so I, I just looked into it a, a little bit. Um, you know, I dealt, I deal with constables occasionally in my practice. They can serve civil process, which you'll, you'll notice is, is under B1. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I've actually used constables to serve civil process. Mm -hmm. And I know how to do that mm -hmm. due to my job. <laughs> um, or a criminal process as well. Oh. So, so there's, um, there are thing, there are powers, but they're, they're limited powers, right? And one of the things the select board, well, a town at a, at a special meeting or an annual town meeting can do is they can vote to prohibit constables from exercising any law enforcement authority. I am not sure what the current status of Woodbury's constable position is, um, and I think that would probably require some research. I am, I'm willing to take the position to, to fill it. I don't want to say that I necessarily want to take the position. I'm willing to do it, mm. and, and I, I'm not. Um, I, I, I laughed when I saw an interview applicant on the <laughs> agenda. I was like, oh, yeah, how you did really, I'm going to try for this? OK. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, maybe we'll have to vote on it. <laughs> uh, and you, you may even have to vote on it. In fact, I, I think you do under the statute. Well, yeah. You do have to vote on yeah. um, whether to well. appoint me or not. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I won't be offended if you don't. I'm not going <laughs> to cry about it. I, I guess at this point, I would ask you, what questions do you have for me? Um, and and what would you what would you like to know about me? Um, you know, as far as what duties the constable has, I mean, in, as far as I can recall, it's minimal. It, it is pretty minimal. <laughs> we I mean, don't yeah, have yeah. the, uh, you know, I mean, our last constable was, was helpful in some things. If the town health officer needed 
somebody to go along on a site visit or if the dog warden needed somebody to go along on a site visit or if they needed to throw somebody out of town meeting. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> can, I, can I ask a question? Because having never uh, seen that happen, I'm sure that it has. Um, Almost. How does it? How does that occur? You know, like what authority? I mean, I, I would imagine that anybody could ask somebody to leave as constable, and they could refuse. So what? What happens at that point? Well, remember that person that you had to yeah, right at a select board meeting? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's something similar to that. So something the moderator similar, yeah. is it the moderator that I would think? In, make the I think call? in the one case, uh, the moderator couldn't get the person to stop talking. And um, people started getting, I don't know, anxious. <laughs> and, uh, and at one point, the constable just came forward and said, let's go. <laughs> Sent him out the fire escape. <laughs> Okay. Well. But there would be no expectation, I don't think. I guess my point is no expectation that Andrew like, uh, used some sort of like law enforcement Capability or anything like that. Mm. Simply just be able to do right. That. You just need to ask right. that person to, to right. Yeah. 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 Right. I'm not going to yeah. physically yeah. restrain them. No. And right. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would ask them to leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there, there is an interesting part of the statute that says if I go through the police academy, I can take take drunk drivers to a neighboring town, which is. I mean, that would be interesting. It's not really something I'm we used to really have, yeah. looking to do, and I, I, I certainly don't need to add to the mm -hmm. stuff that I already have on my plate. <laughs> um, but, I, you know, it, it, it would be interesting to go through the police academy. If I was going to do that, I would, mm -hmm. I, I would do that on my own. I wouldn't mm -hmm. expect the town to pay for it. I'd consider it some kind of CLE training of, of a sort. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So yeah, we had we like I probably said we had a, a, a constable years ago who was an elected constable, and he was really into it, and he was a good guy, and he was you know fair with everybody, and he wanted to take the training. So after having asked a few times, the board finally said yes, go ahead, and he ended up buying a surplus property jeep. It's a Woodbury constable, and he would sit down here and. I don't know if he ever actually caught any speeders, but the idea was to make it look like he was going to catch speeders. <laughs> we, yeah. we, had, we had something like that when I lived in Bethel. Uh -huh. We had a, a constable who I don't think ever actually pulled anybody over, but uh -huh. would park at the fire station uh -huh. and wait for people yeah. to go by. So, yeah, as far as, well, there was, there was one time when he had to do a, a, a look for somebody who was Missing, what do you call that? Like a wellness call or something like that? Wellness check, yeah. Wellness check, yeah, that was bad. Bad, I think he quit soon after that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was... I think Michael had a question. Yeah, well, uh, not a question so much as a clarification. I, I think there, are, at this point, there are three or four levels of what a constable can do. Mm -hmm. um, and each higher level does require some training. I know. Um, mm -hmm. That DLCT could, um, has pretty much defined all of those um, different levels of mm -hmm. being a constable. Um, so that would be a, a good source. Um, so, if constable certified as either level two or level three, law enforcement officers must adhere to the same criteria for maintaining certification as any other level two or three officer. <clears throat> so, we would probably be talking about a level one. That this says all constables, whether level two or level three, first or second constable, appointed or elected. So they seem to be all separate. So we'd be talking about a first constable who was appointed. And we did go through the process to change from elected to appointed years and years ago. So if there's no other questions from the board, do you have any questions, Andrew? Or? Not really. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for being open to the idea sure. of this. 
Um, can I make can a motion? Yes. I'll make a motion that we appoint Andy Delaney to the position of first constable for a period of, I think we have to do it again after town meeting, so we'll say so. Okay. until town meeting. And then after town meeting, we do all the appointments again. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations. Right, well, Thank Thank you. You. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. I'll come up with something. Right. <laughs> we used to have a, we used to have a badge. I don't know whatever happened to that. I don't need a badge. Um, <laughs> How about a cowboy hat? You have the badge? Oh, there used to be a cap, too, oh, really? but that probably got... <laughs> I mean, if you have one. <laughs> There should be some perk to the job. <laughs> I know I was hanging around the office for the longest time, so. All right. okay. And the cap, too, that was down in the basement, that probably got thrown out I've, with all the floor stuff. I've never seen the cap. Yeah. I do have the badge at the office. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That'll make you feel important. No, I didn't. Well, you know, I did, I did like it when I worked for the AG. I had one of those little state badges. Oh. You know, that was fancy. <laughs> Right. Well, thank you. Okay. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Hi. Feel free to stay. You know, okay. this is like super interesting. Room. We may need yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> move on, really, people. <laughs> Robin, we're gonna move oh, on. Oh, what could happen later? Town yeah. yeah. report. <laughs> well, I am gonna head home and get something to eat. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Eat. Say hi to the dogs and cats. I will. And the wife. And the wife. <laughs> The, mar the my report is all elections. Yeah. And one thing I would like to state is that when they fill out their absentee ballots, if they're going to bring them to the office, they have to put it in that first white envelope, sign, print, date the envelope, and then put it inside the one that's got the purplish colored mark on it. And please put your name in the return address slot. <laughs> On the out, on the on outside the pink, envelope, yeah. pinkish purple envelope, yes. All right. So, what do you do if somebody shows up at the office or shows up at the ballot on voting and they just have their ballot in their hand and they well, didn't bring all the voting, envelopes? Well, uh, it's on voting day. That's fine because they're oh, going to okay. put it through the tabulator. Oh, okay. All right. But if you come to the office, then you got to send them back to find their envelope. Yes. And if they threw it away? No, I have extras at the office. Oh, okay. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Yes. Does that sometimes happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes they are just filling out the ballot and putting it in the envelope that has the purplish pink on it. Oh. But it has to be inside that other white envelope. Mm. And is this an appropriate time to discuss the um, appointment of uh, Lex Seville and those individuals or? Is that not appropriate at this? Well, the whole board's not here. The, the what? The whole board isn't oh, here. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're you have to have the justice of the peace. Thank you. Okay. Oh, so you're going to have a justice of the peace at each time during the day in case yes. people want to um, register to vote? Yes. OK. Got it. And I'm also having three people on each slot, and I have four slots, mm -hmm. just because they're thinking that there might be Something happening. Hmm. Hmm. The more there, the more protection I feel. Hmm. We could invite the constable. There you go. Oh, we're going now. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for organizing it. Yeah. And I will be setting job. up Monday afternoon. You'll be what? Setting up. Setting up. Yeah. At the town hall Monday afternoon. Yeah, okay. Okay. What time? And we're probably closer to evening. Not knowing how long yeah. I'll be in the office getting the tail end of the ballots. Mm. I can try so to come I would and say help. Probably, I don't know, six o'clock or so. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. And when Ted Tedesco came in and paid his taxes today, he brought up the thing where the town equipment hit his truck windshield and he it was what back in July-ish? Yeah. 
going to be on his windshield on the driver's side. He's got three little, like, pin mm -hmm. with a stone. Mm -hmm. And then again on the passenger side. Hmm. And he wants to know if there's anything the town could or would do to help him with his windshield. Some, uh, a stone hit it, you mean? or That's what he's mm -hmm. saying. Well, like it kicked up from the plow? No, it wasn't a plow, it was... Oh, it's the, the roadside mower. Oh. oh, I mean, that happens, you know. I've been behind yeah, trucks. Yeah, I, I tried several times to get a hold of him back when it happened and he first made his complaint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't reach him at home. I knocked on his door. He wouldn't answer the door. I don't know if he was just out or he don't hear good. I don't know. But And then we haven't heard nothing until now. Oh. So I, I thought he was okay with, with it. Oh. I remember something about his insurance was going to pay, or... Get the, I suggested to him today to take it out to, what is it, New England Auto Glass at the intersection of 14 and... And see whether it's something that can be fixed. Yeah, they can fix it or whatnot. Yeah. Before it turns into cracks, right? Yeah. yeah. He says, well, let me know what they said. I mean, well, we've got, we had people complain in the past that a stone kicked up and... We don't usually pay those, do we? It's not something any driver can help, so I don't feel like it's really, mm -hmm. it, it can't, I don't feel like the town can be held responsible because anybody driving, driver over a stone, could kick up. It's not like it was negligence or anything like mm -hmm. that. It's my thought. Well, <laughs> the way he was talking, it sounded like this piece of equipment was on the front of something. It's the roadside mower is on the front of the bucket loader. And he's, so, so it is? And he said he was he put his hand up like this trying to get the operator to stop. Uh huh. And the operator kept going. Hmm. Well, the <coughs> operator was watching the road. Well, I've heard, yeah, mm -hmm. I've heard the opposite of that. That there, there was ample time for him to stop and talk. Yep. If if he wanted to. Mm hmm. And and then we didn't hear nothing. I mean, he should have contacted me or you guys that day. Mm hmm. And I, as I recall, it was two or three weeks before we heard anything. So I tried to reach out to him, like I said, mm -hmm. knocking on his door, mm -hmm. trying to call him, and I got nothing. So, and now we're just hearing it again. So I, I don't think that, I don't think that it's a big expense, first of all, especially if he can fill it. Mm. And every vehicle out there has insurance for their windshield. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Hmm. <coughs> and as far as him being incommunicable, <laughs> that just happened before. Well, yeah, it happened with the with the barn, the whole barn mm -hmm. situation where the plow happened to hit it. Oh. And, uh, <coughs> and it, he complained, and then it all went away. Mm -hmm. Never heard nothing more. Yeah. He was going to get estimates for for because he was trying to say that the plow pushed it off its foundation and. Mm. All this, and I went and looked okay. at it, and it definitely didn't hit it that yeah. hard. It mm. just kind of took the trim board mm. off a little bit. Mm. And again, then it went all away. We didn't hear nothing mm. more. And he said today that he said he put a board on there, so he's letting that one drop. <laughs> okay, with the stone they kicked up, is it as simple as just a stone kicked up, or was there, like, I don't remember this coming up before. Was, was there well, anything that the driver did? Yeah wrong in the situation? I was not there, so mm -hmm. I can't really say that. Um, I mean, this machine is likely to kick up stones and sticks, and I mean, it cuts trees like this mm -hmm. and bigger. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. got metal blades under there, and it's, it's things could fly. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I did instruct Timmy, because he was the one running it, uh, to, if there's a vehicle, stop. Stop oh. or more, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're especially if you're meeting somebody, because mm -hmm. that's where the that's the direction of the obstacles would be thrown. Oh, yeah. So I told him to just stop, mm -hmm. and if he has time, shut the mower off and just take mm -hmm. the time to to stop it and start it. Mm -hmm. This is the it. best that we can do. I mean, there's not <laughs> a lot of shielding that we can add to the machine mm -hmm. to prevent it. It's you know you got to keep it up off the ground. That's one thing that's necessary but it's a lot i mean that's mm -hmm. what it's for any operator uh -huh. so you the person is running the loader as well as operating the 
Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's pretty busy. Yeah. I think. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's very. Right there by your head, you kept going to the three little, and then there's three more on the passenger side. I mean, I had Interesting. a I had a windshield fit with little holes like that, and it cost me twenty five dollars. Mm -hmm. So you didn't even ask your insurance. No. They say rule of thumb: if, if the spot is smaller than a quarter, mm -hmm. then they can fill it. Yeah. And they might be this mm -hmm. the size of a pinhead. Mm -hmm. A little. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he wants right. to get it fixed mm -hmm. before the cold comes. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I guess we can just tell him that we don't, don't uh, take the town doesn't take responsibility for those things. Should we? I mean, we haven't in the past. It's a slippery slope, I think. Yeah. Once, once we take responsibility for one thing, it's just mm. going to be the next and the mm. next and the next. Um, so. Well, I mean, what I've done in the past, in my past career, was you pass it to the insurance company. Mm -hmm. The insurance company is going to want an investigation of some sort to prove whether the town is liable or not. No, yeah, true. That yeah. never happened. Now mm -hmm. we are, here we are six months later, seven mm -hmm. months later, the insurance company is not going to want to tackle that now. Mm -hmm. So I think that it might be a different case if, um, if there was like negligent operation, right? I mean, I think that we'd have to rely on well, your expertise as, as, as the road commissioner to recommend whether like there's negligent operation, which in which case maybe mm -hmm. the town could be responsible for something like that. But if it's well, like if the, if the truck uh, was overloaded or something like that and gravel was flying off the back, you know, so it's not so bad. Common course of working on the roads and, mm -hmm. and regular course of business, then I think that's what we... So in order to satisfy him, we have to file a claim, right, Randy? We'd have to file a claim with our insurance? Yeah. Or just that's really pay the twenty-five dollars to get it filled and have it done with. We the town could. <laughs> well, I think if if we're going to if we're going to assume responsibility, which that's what he's saying. He's no. saying the town is responsible mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. this damage. Mm -hmm. And this late in the game, the insurance company's not going to want to investigate mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking of a quick, easy way to mm -hmm. make to satisfy him and make him go away he could, on this issue. He could have it fixed, take it out to the. I can't believe we're still talking about this, but take it out to the auto glass place and find out how much it costs and do it, and then. <coughs> I would recommend yeah. a select board member. Contact him and talk to him and get a judgment of how he feels about this. And it's good to see from there. Not going to be me. Oh, oh yeah. Go ahead, Mary. You were there. Oh, very close. So, yeah. easy. Oh, no. Use your sweet That's a good recommendation, Mike. She's got a sweet voice. To neighbors. I don't. <laughs> you do. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good way to move us on. Uh, Randy. Okay. Have a trigger report. All right. On to you. Um, over the last two weeks, I took in $709,000, one dollar and eighty-seven cents. Out of that was current taxes, $705,719.77. Delinquency, $240. Recording, land postings, etc., balancing remainder of $3,042.10. We also got electronic transfer in from first quarter from Swenson's of $6,062.31. Payroll over the last two weeks, $10,109.12. Accounts payable, $125,007.04. I transfer over the last two weeks. $590,000. Um, money is still piling in. Mm. Um, 
struggling with uh, Nimrick has had multiple issues um, that is mm. debilitating as far as my position. Mm. Um, they've been trying to fix it. Um, mm. I ended up working Saturday to do a $127,000 deposit because during working hours between 9 and 1 is when the mess is down. Oh. So it, we're locked out of it completely. Somebody comes in, doesn't have wants, confirmation that they pay their taxes, I can't get it to them. Mm -hmm. um, I have complained, mm. emails, calls. Is this every day? This has been pretty much every day the last two weeks. It's gotten worse. Really? Yes. Is so, it just because it's a busy time for all the towns, or is it a flaw um, in their system? They're, they're um, let me think on this, computer-wise um, here, their, what was down, their server. Oh, oh. So, um, yeah. Hmm. Oh, other things that I put in front of you, it's that time of year to reapply for the LCT's insurance. That being said, I sent it around to the select board and I sent it around to the listers to look at the valuations of each of our properties in the worth. Mm -hmm. And especially from the flood and the claims, um, the same thing with the highway equipment, with mm. um, that I want your input. I don't mm -hmm. want it on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. and, and um, the other thing is MVP. Um, we have to refill out for health insurance again for the new year. Mm -hmm. If that's the, the policy you guys want to go with is a platinum again. Um, and the other thing up there I left was Swenson's uh, printout. I think it's in front of Chris, actually. Mm -hmm. There's MVP <coughs> showing <coughs> policy. Policy starting January 1st. That one, I think that skips that. And so right hand is the LCT. Yeah. Um, so again, like for the, I reached out to the library um, asking if that's a good number and um, that they wanted for coverage for the materials in the library and uh, they actually want to increase it. So, so that's just for the contents you mean? Yep, which is all included. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, those, these are amounts that, that um, if we get in a pickle again, we never raise mm -hmm. the money. I mean, so, is on here, does it show what the current insurance value is? Because that's what Ron was wondering. How do we know what they're insured there's, for now? There's a binder in the bowl. Yeah. That's our whole policy. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. It's not over here. What? No, those this are giving me options. This, this is the portal that I go on to, and you can either do it at two hundred fifty thousand, five hundred thousand, one million. Well. So, <laughs> coverage-wise, um, yeah, you got the build. You got the school building. You have the town hall, you have the town clerk's office, you oh, have the garage, okay. this is the um, small the tools the town the at the garage okay. for equipment. So, um, but this is, if I understand this right, this is replacement cost. Correct. Right. So. Right. So. Uh, currently, currently, we are we are insured up to these values. Yes, I'm wondering if you want to raise any. Right. Mm. So I think that, that way, Al, you guys are aware. Right, Alf, you would be the the most um, in terms of like the the highway equipment. Did she give you? Did you give you me? Have one so these are small. No, no. They okay. actually do the de depreciation of the equipment oh. on their own. I this is oh. for the materials that are hands-on tools for replacement. Anything that's in there for electric tools, I mean, anything in there other than equipment that, that we have. I guess I'm looking at the, this is, you know, like the freight line or the Caterpillar. Um, Those are done accordingly to when they are purchased and the depreciation over time. So, so, that's we sad. Them, we so we can't, we them. can't adjust that. No. Okay. It's just the materials. 
and the building structures. Okay. And because, mm -hmm. and I say that because we haven't had the reappraisal since 07, so, mm -hmm. and the cost of the historical sites in which mm -hmm. the town, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no way that, it's a school, the school building is this building right here. Yeah. Yeah. We're, 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 we're just, we're insured three. for 3.1 million. Yeah. We never replace it for no. Well, wait. Well then, I mean, it's not, I can't imagine the cost of that. Yeah. 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 I would think, right? You have a better head for those big numbers than I do, Chris. I think so. <laughs> you work on three million dollar projects. No. No. But okay. I can tell you what one looks like usually. <laughs> 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 um, that's a but I don't think that's a three. Down. I don't think that's a, that's a bigger than a three million dollar project. Mm. to replace the entire school. Mm. No. So you need, when do you need input for this and then how, do, how does the board gain input for this? So I will, I will scan what we have currently okay. to the board and then um, you put your decisions, opinions, all that good stuff in there. Um, it's got to be done before, I'd say, the middle of November because it's, they have to get everything in the program for July 1 because they're on a calendar year. Okay. But the listers presumably would be helpful with this too. It would, yes, very much right. so. Yep. And you sent it to them too? I did. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So we don't do anything with the town equipment, just nope. the materials? Yep. Okay. Um, other goodies. So yeah, I am debating on changing. Um, I will be opened Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this week from 5 to 8 um, for the last minute incomers on tax bills. Um, so if I start having issues in the morning, then I may wait until the office is closed. Mm. Um, I have over 500000 that was just dropped off today. Oh. Um, the escrow companies are finally now paying. It's the last week. Um, but yeah, I'm like a sitting duck. Um, if that the accounting system doesn't work, so. Hmm. Hmm. And if I do it after oh. one, then a lot of the towns have already closed, shut down. They're not you know, hmm. in Denmark as much. So hmm. I'll see how that goes. Tomorrow. So it's easier to access after one o'clock. I see. Oh. Yep. So how do we reach out to the listers for help with determining the value of the building? She said she had I didn't get a response from any of them. Right. So we need so, to follow up. Yeah. Okay. This is on the email that you already sent us, right? Is this just a printout of that? Or? I sent the actual link of the renewal uh -huh. this is around that. stating okay. they don't do it um, through the mail anymore. There used to be okay. this huge mm -hmm. packet and I'd have to fill it out. Now it's just electronic and you can't even print out a page so i screenshotted each one of those diagrams yeah. okay. and you get to choose the values on each thing okay i don't want to uh, i don't want to i don't remember that seeing that you don't Should remember we? seeing this no i do i remember seeing the email i don't specifically remember like this no. piece of it but i remember no, you your wouldn't, comment about the you wouldn't building. see that actual because i just did oh. samples okay. that are screenshotted oh gotcha. i have to go actually into this module and Mm. Choose the the amounts. Just out of curiosity, what's the budget for the fire station that's being built? No. So we're not we're not covering. Yeah, they're no, not. No, they're no, not no, no, yeah, I'm just just just, just for information. Uh, one point three million. Right. So one point three million. Yeah, like yeah. there's no way you can mm. replace the school. Right. The, inf the infrastructure in the school mm. is way more than. I did have to come up with a lot of these figures for the um, revision of the local um, hazard mitigation plan. Mm -hmm. We got some information from mm -hmm. the insurance person that you connected me with, Randy, for mm -hmm. like the different buildings, what they're mm -hmm. valued at. Um, I, th I think they, s I probably still have, I, I know I still have that on my computer, and it's actually part of the plan. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you mind it. looking at it and sending it? If you sure. can find it. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. And I'll send another email to the listers and ask for input and um, 
Maybe we can revisit this because it's not. We have till next meeting or a little while. Yeah. Maybe we can put this on the agenda again. Some of these numbers seem kind of high. I mean, the town office, $455,000. And I thought that last year when we looked, mm -hmm. and now, like, Harry Chris was coming about the school, I'm like, oh, I'm probably, it's like, not, not no even way. high. No, no. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's probably low, too, right? Yeah. The town office? Yeah. It would be close, I think. Hmm. He could build something. He <laughs> <laughs> knows build something. <laughs> Um, okay, so for the next uh, next meeting, we're, we'll put that on the agenda. Um, and that's through VLTC? VLCT. VLCT. VLCT insurance. For buildings. Thanks, Brian. Um, anything else or are we moving on? No questions, then yeah. All right. We're good. And we'll move on to the road commissioner's report. Alfie. Uh, so rail trail is done. That's what we talked about last meeting. Uh, went fairly well. It was just a one day thing. Got below the growl. Mm -hmm. And I put a bunch of stone around the up stream side of the culvert in hopes that it doesn't under, you know, work underneath the culvert again. And I reset all of the granite pieces uh, as well on the uphill side. So we're crossing our fingers on that. It's all open, it's a four foot collar, it should take the water. Uh, but that's the best we can do for now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got probably one more day, maybe a day and a half of sand hauling to do, and that'll be done. I did talk to gravels. They're totally flexible with uh, leaving sand on the table. Oh. If we need to, they'll just bill us for what we've taken beyond the beyond the half that we've already paid for. Oh. So they'll just bill us for that, whatever it's going to be. So you already have the half, or will have the half? Right. Uh, yeah. We paid for half of it uh, ahead. Mm -hmm. And we've 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 hauled over half of it. Got it. So we've gotten our monies that we paid in <clears throat> worth of sand. Anything over that halfway mark, we'll have to okay. she'll, mm -hmm. she'll bill us. And but you've taken as much as you have room for. I mean that was oh, yeah, a so problem. I'm, yes, before. I'm going as high with it. Yeah. So can. they don't care if we just don't take it. They didn't well, have to, not like leaving a pile there for us, right? They're, they're just, flexible either way. But okay. what I'm thinking, the contract goes until July. Yeah, July first of July. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the spring, if we hustle right out, we can replenish our pile with that amount. Oh. With what's left in the contract. Yeah. Okay. And then have a fresh start when we do a new contract. Most likely, it's going to be a cheaper price than uh -huh. the next contract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. If it would be incentivized. We'd okay. be incentivized to get that sand in the spring yeah. as soon as we can. So that's how that shook out. They're very flexible, very easy to get along with. So uh, I'm hoping, hoping in the next couple of days, hopefully this week, we can get those, get that finished. And we've been working on plows, getting them set up. It's a lot of stuff that's froze up from not being used over the summer. Mm. I don't mean froze like ice, but it's rusted. Yeah. So we've been working on that. <coughs> um, questions? So if, I'm just thinking though, if he said, if they say they don't want you to pick up sand until August, usually <coughs> will they have some in the spring? Decide to. I mean, we just will see. You said they're flexible. They've got a huge pile up there. Right oh, now. Okay. So okay. unless other towns go and clean them out yeah. between now and spring, okay. which most towns have already got their sand yeah. up for the year, mm -hmm. um, so I don't foresee that happening. Okay. Thank you. And we're about, we are, I 
1,700 yards right now. So we only need eight or nine to get to our quota. Mm -hmm. And so I'm guessing there are probably five or six hundred yards that are mm -hmm. left, that's left on the table for the contract mm -hmm. in the spring. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's going to be a problem at all to get it there okay. as long as the mud dries up. Yeah. <laughs> like usually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many yards do you hold the dump truck hold at once? 14 yards. Yeah. So, so it's, a, it's a lot of loads. It's a lot of back and forth. Yeah. Is it wild? In a day, we're usually eight, nine loads. Mm. Per truck. Per truck. Yeah. Wow. A little while back, we, we were, had a discussion about how you were wrapping up a bunch of grant projects and. Um, were feeling comfortable about getting all your grading done before roads freeze up and that you feel still good about that or that's already completed or uh no there's certainly more grading to do yeah um the snow this morning yeah it surprise looks, i mean it looks like it's gonna clear out the rest of this week and maybe some into next week Mm -hmm. But at this point, there's no telling. There's nothing you can't plan on the weather. Right. Uh, uh, right now, I'm working on getting the trucks ready. Yep. I want to at least get the plow fronts on. So if we do get a freak snowstorm, we can at least plow them off one way. Yep. I'm going to hold off on the wings because we still got a bunch of hauling to do. I'd like to replenish our stockpile for spring with gravel. So it's just easier to gill through the scales with the trucks without the wing on. Mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah. this is this is the gravel, not the sand that we're talking about. Right, the sand, okay. the sand, yeah, the okay. sand will be all done. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Where's the gravel pile? Right at the shop. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we usually have three different size gravel mm -hmm. piles there. Really. Or types of gravel. Mm hmm. So I'm hoping to, it's just so much easier to have it in stock mm. in the spring. You can go out and fix spots here and there. Because a lot of times the pits or the quarries won't open until later and you can't get material. Mm. So that's, that's, I'm hoping that we can have time for that before the weather turns changes on us. Mm -hmm. But this morning was a little wake up call. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any mm -hmm. other questions, Ralph? None. No. All right. Thank you. Uh, Skip the recovery officer's report. Okay. Uh, in your handout, you have the uh, three-page. And um, first, <clears throat> the first sheet is just an illustration of the projects that have been obligated. In other words, in this case, some of the funds have been received. I think close to $96,000 have been received. Mm -hmm. And there's another $60,000 in the pipeline that should flow into Brandy's accounts in the next Mm -hmm. So that would be a total of 153524 So projects in process, number two, uh, pending initial project development. The first one, County Road, I'm working on the last <coughs> uh, pieces of documentation to get that finalized and into FEMA. So Alfie just finished up the County Road extension, so that's all part of this project. 739504, and that will be in FEMA's hands tomorrow. Totally. So, town offices and radar speed sign. <clears throat> Still hoping to get something when the uh, work is finished at the town offices so I can do the reconciliation between how much you've received for insurance money as opposed to how much the damages were, and that difference will be able to uh, ask FEMA to uh, give us some funds for. Applicants sign projects. I just signed this one last week. 
And by signing it, I agreed that the work has been completed and all the documentation we sent is true. And that's the final step before it becomes obligated. So projects in process total 87,356. So it's a total of $240,880. And that's at 75% FEMA reimbursement. The state still owes us 12.5% of that total. And once the state gives us that money, the total, it will be $270,990. That's still owed us. No. no. What's owed us is $87,356 okay. and a portion of the $153,524. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. The total, however, will be $270,990. Plus the state will have to pay, or will pay, 12.5% of that, which is an extra, excuse me, the state will pay $30,000. $110. That's 12.5% of the total federal monies we received. So the total mm -hmm. would vary will be 270,990. Wait a minute, that, that includes the 12%? That would include the 12%. Oh, yeah. not added to, that's not 270 plus 30. No, it's 270,990. I misspoke. I thought it was close to 300, over 300 at the time. Well, if you can recall early on in this, this project, uh, League of Cities and Towns came out with, you know, this announcement that the feds, federal FEMA folks will pay 90% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and the state will kick in, oh boy, an extra 7.5%. Mm -hmm. So Woodbury would only be on the hook for about 2.5%. Mm -hmm. The state's kind of walked that back and FEMA's walked that back because they don't have the funds that will allow them to do that. <laughs> You know, so it, it may happen. <laughs> if it happens, all the better. Okay. So right now it's seventy-five percent and twelve and a half percent of the yeah. which is federal money. You know, which is still you know, it's better than that hundred money. Yeah. Two hundred and seventy thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, item number three: <clears throat> projects pending. FEMA has a mitigation mm -hmm. plan review. So these are for the two bridges and. Town Highway 23, Town Highway 24, permanent fixed, which is hazard mitigation projects. So FEMA, on their own volition, has written mitigation planning projects for both of these bridges. Their projects are each $300,000 to replace and mitigate the hazard of, of uh, mitigate the chances of the bridges flooding out again. So that's $300,000. And they use that as a placeholder. Mm -hmm. And so we know there's going to be an RFP issue one of these days for that work. And so if those projects that the RFP is being written for come in over $300,000, we're OK. Just mm -hmm. as long as it doesn't come in 100% over three hundred thousand dollars, so anything from three hundred and one thousand dollars to five hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars is okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're no longer using the placeholder that we got from uh, the wall. Well, 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 yeah, that's that's a good placeholder, but yeah, okay. Abel wants to move this project along because we need the project obligated to extend it. So we can extend this project yeah. up to 36 mm -hmm. months nope. beyond, what is it, January 14th, 2025, uh. when the, all the projects in this disaster 4270 mm. have to be completed by. So we mm. can extend it up to 36 months. Go ahead. Our original estimate from DeWolf, though, is it like half a million, right? Yeah, 500 each. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah $500,000 each. Right. So we're, we're well within the, the $600,000 bogey, if you want to call it that. Okay. But, uh, you know, I'd like to see that RFP hit the street mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Because in a conference call we had today, the mm -hmm. state indicated that in order to write 
for an extension, you need a firm timeline. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wrote to Nate Sikar today, and I cc you folks, asking if the RFP, within the body of the RFP that contained some sort of project plan, mm -hmm. you know, with a timeline, you know, construction start or contract award, you know, all that stuff that goes along mm -hmm. with the project. Because when I write that, a project timeline has to be included along with, you know, budgetary, mm -hmm. budgetary costs. You know, we, we have the scope of work from Nate, which I have already forwarded to FEMA, and they're happy with that. But now the state needs more information, mm -hmm. <clears throat> or they won't give us the money. <clears throat> but they will give us an extension, or do we have to have the RFP in order to get the extension? We need a timeline from, some, from somewhere okay. that we can hang our hat on, if you want to put it like that, saying the project <laughs> contract will be signed, say, March 2024, uh, it will be staged April 2024, construction begin, construction end, mm -hmm. uh, site inspection, and final sign off and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Whatever goes into a bridge project. So the easiest way to get that timeline is to have the RFP before January. Yeah, if the RFP yeah. contains a timeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I'm hoping it does. I wrote to Nate today asking if it was the time, if there is a timeline in the body of that RFP. And I just gave him some bulleted items that the state would be looking for in that timeline. So I'm hoping it has it. Short of that, we would need to come up with a timeline. That's defensible. <laughs> yeah. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. That, yeah. You, know you can, can say that, that, okay, the RFP will be mm -hmm. issued sometime. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that time frame is. Mm -hmm. I know when you signed the contract, it, it was, the RFP was going to be issued in 2024. And, okay, so it's getting pretty close. Mm -hmm. Two months. Did I understand correctly from the email that Nate was suggesting we wait until January to put the RFP out? I think he, I think he might have said that the responses we no responses till January. Yeah, but they'll give that as like a deadline. You know, give some time into the winter to for the responses. Oh, okay. That's what I. Well, did you respond to my email? I haven't been on email since. No, I think that's a previous Sorry. email. Oh, uh, okay. Right. I don't think that was today's. Move on. Yeah. Okay. I think uh -huh. so. So anyhow, that's what I need. The timeline. Yeah. You know, I have enough figures, and I have enough diagrams. We have H and H studies. So we have all that documentation. Mm -hmm. We have a budgetary cost from DeWolf and Associates, mm -hmm. and FEMA has a budgetary cost of three hundred grand for both projects, each each at three hundred thousand dollars. But you know, absent a timeline, which the state requires, I don't know if we can get an extension. Oh. And that timeline can't be something that we just pull out of the air. You know, it has to be defensible. I think I think that. That falls in Nate's lap a little bit. He needs to tell us when he's going to have a design. Yeah, he's been saying we get it, so. He has a design. I saw his design. So the design's there. FEMA has the design. You know, we have all the nuts and bolts, except we just don't have, mm -hmm. like, a project plan. He's got to have a template for that. So, you know, mm -hmm. I looked at templates, and, <laughs> you know, bridge work is not my scope of work, mm -hmm. you know. I guess my point is that Nate's got a template for that. that he can, if, so. if we push a little bit, hopefully. Well, I can't push him. I ask. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he can, but he can at least ask the question. He's done what he said he would do right. so far. Yeah. So we've been. Yeah, he said he said it would be in the fall. Yeah. And he's, he's, that was until yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and he's you know so far he's, yeah. he's if he's got the design that was the yeah. one. That was a big had. time, the big one. As far as his and time I think goes, he usually puts together, you know, the bid documents and arranges mm -hmm. all of mm -hmm. that. So we'll be RFP. set as long as that comes yeah. in. So I think it's really in his court to to get us what we need. We need that in, time of in advance of January fourteenth. I oh, need yeah. it in December. You need it in December. Because I have to write for the extension in December. Okay. If not sooner. All right. So maybe if we don't, I mean, we should if we don't. 
if you don't see a response from him, it would be worthwhile for one of the select board members, in addition to like no. reach out, right? No. Yeah, if, it, if it doesn't come in this week, then I'll send out a reminder and continue to CC you folks. Yeah. He would? Continue to CC you yeah. on the email. What I don't understand is if these bridges are being replaced, how is these how is this mitigation? You're replacing it, today? rebuilding it in a different okay. fashion, this okay. is the using larger that, culverts, and oh, okay. just said it was an using and different types of fill. Okay. Yeah, realizing so that it's going to be a bigger bridge, a higher bridge, and there's no response. Yeah. That was like backwards. Okay, thank you. That. Yeah. It's just yeah. got it. it's more elaborate than, oh. than it originally was. Okay. Thank you. All right, so if, if I don't see anything from him this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's worth just being a little bit of squeaky wheel for a million dollars. Well, you know, then the select board would have to make a choice. Do you really want to replace those bridges? Oh, God. So. <laughs> we're good. We'll get it. Don't worry about it. No. <laughs> That's what I said. No. We'll so get it. I do worry about it. Anyway, <laughs> so, on page two, this shows a, a screenshot. Of the uh, grants portal, human grants portal. And you've heard me talk mm -hmm. about the human grants portal and other things during these uh, mm -hmm. select board meetings. So I just thought I would screenshot you. And if you look at the first project, 739491, this is the rail trail. And if you go across the process step, the project is obligated. The activity completion date is January 14th, 2025, number of damages is one. The best available cost, and that's our cost. That's all mm -hmm. our damage inventories, all Alfie's work, hauling mm -hmm. materials, materials, equipment usage. So we came up with you know, $40,784 and change. That's 100%. Best available federal share is at 75%. Mm -hmm. So that's how that 75% is derived. And that last column, these are the monies that will flow into, or some that already has got into Brandy's mm -hmm. accounts. So that's how the feds derive what we're going to get, the 75% share. I just thought it would be useful for you folks to see how this can run. Skip, how come some of them are like 100%? Oh, yeah. Like, like the third project and the fourth project? Uh, where? That same page, project seventy four sixteen ninety two. Yeah, that's a hundred percent, isn't it? Mm, yeah, hundred percent funding because it was emergency protective measures. Oh, it's not oh. mitigation. Right. Okay. So anything that was an emergency, they mm. fund right away. Got it. Oh. Oh. is this the second? Is this the second replacement? Well, the second replacement was after. This year's flood, yeah. right? Okay, never mind. This is last year's. Flood. Okay, thank this, you. But we had a good laugh. Mm. This is, we talked about this year's disaster, but then we walked into last year's disaster. And yeah. we wondered what next year's disaster yeah. is. Mm. As much laughter as you can have on a call with emails. So, uh, again, I'll, you know, I'll, Keep working, hopefully with Nate, and get that project timeline. Uh, so we had a meeting today in the third bullet, or excuse me, should be the fourth bullet, but for the example, 48 times the address from month, it's July, this is back in the first year. Uh, we had an introductory meeting with FEMA on October 9th, but I was on vacation, so Danielle covered that. Uh, we had a meeting today, it was called a recovery scoping meeting that included FEMA and the state of Vermont. And we just went over in like high level detail uh, what was destroyed during this last disaster. And we told the FEMA folks and the state folks that was roads, we didn't have any facilities damage or anything like that. They wanted the approximate cost of uh, the repairs, and Randy had given me that, and it's approximately $76,000 and change. Mm -hmm. So it's not as expensive 
as the last disaster, thankfully. And uh, the state, in all their wisdom, has inserted another level of scrutiny mm -hmm. for the people who put together damage inventories. They've hired a consulting firm to look over the damage inventories that we submit to FEMA. Oh my goodness. So in essence, there'll be yet another check and balance. This will be at the state level, and it'll cause our damage inventory, which we do a good job at, mm -hmm. we're pretty thorough with them, to be looked at twice, on different sets of eyes, mm -hmm. you know, with different levels of responsibility, and I can hardly wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it'll be really exciting. Mm -hmm. Danielle Little, that was really excited about it too. <laughs> <laughs> do you think this will be an in-state uh, contractor? Or? Yeah, they hired a consultant just to do this. Hmm? They, they've hired a consultant to do they this. They have already hired somebody. Yes. Oh, well. Wow. So anyhow, that's just another level of scrutiny hmm. that we'll have to, or another hoop if you want to call it, hmm. we'll have to uh, So that's about all I have. We have a meeting with Alfie queued up for next Thursday to go over the uh, damages for this latest disaster. Mm -hmm. And with the uh, information that Alfie gives us, we'll begin doing our damage inventory. So anyhow, uh, things are moving a lot, yeah. especially with the first disaster, 4270. Yeah, we're almost done with that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is, which is you know, going to be a big milestone when that's done. Mm -hmm. And a lot of money to fund cameras for the uh, offices, too. What? It's a good segue. <laughs> it's a segue <laughs> into our next uh, agenda item. Any questions? No, it's a nice job, though. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. It's, like, uh, it's just not me, it's Daniel. Oh, yeah. And Alfie and yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. Nice job, everybody. Yeah. Any other questions? Security cameras for the town office. I didn't bring anything. All right. I guess I didn't uh, print out the email that came from from Skip Marcasani, but. Um, Want me to pull it out? Uh, won't do me any good. I can't see. <laughs> but anyways, he's come up with. I mean, he tells me that the cameras that are there now are not any good and they have to be disconnected from the system because they don't work with the new system. And he came up with an idea that we can get a better security camera system for $5,000. And I just really wanted to know why. I mean, he doesn't know. He's not the one that ordered it, but um, I'd like to know why some people think that's necessary. Can I ask what the cameras do right now? They take right now they take pictures of what's in the parking lot, but they don't record anything. I think that's that but it's just the parking lot at the moment? I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Skip and I talked about that briefly. All right. I was in the office last week. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said that those cameras in the system which does not work, you know, were purchased using grant money. So it didn't cost the town anything. Mm -hmm. And the system doesn't record anything and it doesn't work. Now, I don't know if it's incompatible with the... It circuit. doesn't hold the, ner the, the internet. It won't hold it. So okay. I have to reboot it, but it won't. Yeah. If a cop mm -hmm. comes in and says, can you pull back this and show me a screenshot of a face or a license plate, I can't do that. Yeah, but that's not our job. Right? I mean, it's not your job to protect us in the building? The, the cop? I mean, are there, are there the threats? The reason for the security is the threats system? to well, the building. Talk, what? There's drug activity out there. Yeah, but have they ever threatened? Have they ever harmed the building or threatened anybody? Or Are we waiting for that day? Well, yeah. Oh, okay. That's what we all do. Right. I mean, we all live that way every day. We no, I have cameras. We take chances. Yeah, I have yeah, cameras and I keep chances. myself well prepared. Protected. How, how long ago were the security cameras initially installed? Five years ago. Five years ago. Yeah. 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 Purchased by your brand. And there's three you said? Where there's the... three set up outdoors. Mm -hmm. So there's and the then there's more over at the garage. Okay. And that was another of my questions. So I guess the first question is, 
There's one that watches the parking lot at the town All office. All three watch the parking lot. One is oh. like kind of of the road-ish. Uh -huh. <laughs> one is in the center and then one is if somebody's going behind the building. Oh, okay. And then the town garage, is that like linked somehow so that this proposal of skips would also cover the town garage? Or no, I don't think so. Alright, okay. totally separate. Okay. There's there's four at the town garage. Okay. Do they work? Mm -hmm. They do work. They do work. Do they record also? Like uh, if they do, I don't know how to use so it. So like you can watch it live, but you yes. can't pull yes. something up. I mean I can sit in my office and watch the whole yard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can watch cars drive by at the shop. Okay. <laughs> And but as far as protecting but as from... as far as going back to see what happened last night at midnight, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know if it's capable of that, and certainly I'm not. Okay. So, well, so you would think that would be what would be wanted in the case of the garage where you have all kinds of expensive equipment ability. hanging around. What? They do have the ability to do that. Oh, they do. They just don't. But it won't hold signal. It's not a direct into our internet, so it doesn't hold it. So what do you mean the garage? You talking about the garage one now? No, it's on office. Oh, okay. It's okay. Right. Okay. Is it is it the same system? It is the same system. Yeah. Yeah. There's no real place to store the information either. That's mm -hmm. right. You know, so you would need some sort of uh, server or hard drive, mm -hmm. dedicated or maybe not dedicated, with a shared shared drive, and so you could save the recording. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether or not you want to protect the uh, elected officials or staff there, it's up to you if you feel they're not worth protecting. But also, with Randy indicating that she had processed half a million dollars worth of, of checks or cash or things like that, you might expect you should have cameras there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Some sort of device to record if someone's going to come in and rob the place this time of year. And currently, you can monitor the parking lot. It just doesn't store that information. It doesn't. It, it's in and out all day. It glitches. So you don't. It, you know, it's just a blank it's screen. Not, yeah. Doesn't work. Right. So it seems like somebody along the way thought it was important to have cameras. Right? Actually, install them. Our insurance company, and that's why they gave us a grant for it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Our insurance company suggested we have them. Our insurance company offered a grant, and that was one of the fully paid for security for your location. Mm -hmm. And so it was fully paid for installation, the equipment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's wrong? Let's get so if we don't have cameras there, are we under any liability from the insurance company if we don't have cameras? Even though because they gave us a grant to have the cameras in the Maybe. And you also have to stop and think, we only have one way in and out of there. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, because going out the back there is not going to save you much of anything. <laughs> it's only a few feet between the front door and the back door if you were to go right. down the basement. It's not, it's not like the other end of the building or something. Okay, well the question is, I guess, whether we want to budget for this or not. We'll think about that when the budgeting time comes around. I don't think we have that kind of, I don't know, all the money we're spending on that, um, all that IT security stuff. And so, I can't remember, I did look at the email, but Skip sent an email that suggested it was, it was a $5,000 line item. Mm -hmm. And what is our um, threshold before we have to put something like that out to bed? Eight. 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 Okay. Um, I'm just curious if during this conversation we should talk about the cameras at the garage. Like, if those aren't recording either, like, honestly, what's the point of a camera that doesn't well, they just, record? They just did, didn't he just redo the uh, connectivity with the broadband and all that stuff? It has nothing to do with that. The, the ones that it were ordered. They're not hooked in hardwired to the system. You so talk about garage now. Yes. The garage ones don't record. You say they record, they but do it record. only does a short section because it doesn't have enough storage. So then it like goes away, like it wakes itself. Yeah. So like if you if there was like a robbery, 
Maybe you could Certain do it the day, next day or something, day. but then it would be gone and you couldn't get it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it hooked up to your laptop? No, it's got its own monitor. Wow. Got up near the ceiling that I can look at. Huh. Is there a way to store it? Is there a, 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 an item that you can buy to store more of these pictures? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have no idea. Yeah. No. Is it like the cloud? Like, could you start on the cloud somehow? Well, you know, a little hard drive will hold a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> you just have to know how to how to get it and how to hook it up. Is this something we can put on uh, the agenda in two weeks to mm -hmm. and ask if we can. Skip would more information? Yeah. Yeah, maybe he could come and answer questions. And whether we can problem solve this, the garage and then we can make a decision about mm -hmm. um, either purchasing or budgeting for cameras for the the office, the town office. But in an ideal world, it would record all the activity for X certain period for of certain time. Amount of time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And maybe that's a solution for both area, both places. Mm -hmm. It's the same system. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's just the lack of storage. Mm -hmm. Do you have stuff go missing? Are I you? have not. Not yeah. in my tenure of being here. Not yeah. had anything. At the same time, that doesn't mean that it will never happen. Absolutely. No, that's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I do pay pretty close attention to tracks in the yard, mm -hmm. even when it's a rainy day, and you know, you, you do see tracks once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, but I have not seen anything come on missing thus far. Deer tracks. Lots of deer tracks in the yard. That's good. That's what you want to see? Yeah. All right, so that's the um, next um, meeting's agenda, hopefully. Yeah. Who wants to reach out to him about coming? I can do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I guess I would suggest that we do some of these updates and other business before we talk about some of these more squishy things that I had suggested. We might you got my answers, sure. Okay. Um, yeah. So we, uh, under updates and other business, we have reissued the RFP for the town hall. Nothing? Mm -hmm. it's quiet over there? All right. Um, I did talk to one roofer I know. He said he would be interested, but he hasn't done anything about it yet. So mm -hmm. imagine that a roofer. <laughs> not a, They're pretty busy. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Hope it's not the same roofer that I'm hoping to get. Probably. Mm -hmm. um, the air quality report. So, Liz, I know that you you want to update us on. You had a interaction or a conversation with yeah. uh, them. Yeah. Yep. So I I did get through um, to somebody via email, and they were great about responding really quickly. Um, so the questions I asked were um, about the items that were read and whether we needed to be concerned. And they did say that those were concerning types of mold and that we did have some levels of them, but that they were relatively low, um, but that yes, they're, you know, they were somewhat concerning. Um, hold on, I'm gonna pull up the email. I shared it with you guys mm -hmm. too. Um, you recommend an air scrubber, right? They did, they also said something that really bummed me out, which was that the sheetrock that we just replaced, I guess where they found mold was like just above where it had been cut out from the flood. So basically to get rid of that, they didn't specify like exactly how far I'd like to know it more. It would be nice if they could just say where exactly. Yeah, where. so um, what they did say was that when we cut it out after the flood, we didn't go quite high enough to get everything, right. so yeah. I don't know how many inches it is, they said mm -hmm. a small amount, mm -hmm. but basically that whole seam sounds like needs to be recut, maybe just in some areas though. Um, I don't have all the details on that yet, you guys saw that too, mm -hmm. but I wonder if there's another way, because that would just, it would really suck to have to do that 
it's, it's basically the same amount of work, even if it's a smaller amount of sheet rock. It's like doing it all over again. Oh, God, no. <coughs> uh, I wonder whether, whether putting the mud and everything over like it would seal it. Like seal it. Right, I was wondering that too, no? if we could do something from the back side, like spray it with some... You think it'll just like... See, my understanding is that unless you pull it out, it'll it'll come back. Yeah. Yeah. So unfortunately, I think it's probably got to come out. Yeah. Well, at least it's not taped yet. All of it. No. Well, no. The, I think we need to do, find out from somebody, whatever his name is, Wesley. Wesley. Um, how, how much right? higher that that needs mm -hmm. to be cut, and you know what areas too, because maybe it's not mm -hmm. the entire. Because if we do, if we have to do that, then we're not going to be able to get everything done in the basement by the end of the year, which I was hoping to do for you to get something to FEMA. Well, that, um, how critical is it that work to be done by the end of the year? It has to be done by <clears throat> January 14th, 2025. Yeah. And okay. that Kima is... She, well, I don't know, but. I've been back and forth with her. I just um, sent her more pictures because um, I had talked. I had asked her about the ceiling. Mm -hmm. It hadn't been within the scope of work that she had given an estimate for. No. Um, you, what? So I had asked her if she had planned on doing anything with the ceiling. The ceiling. Because there are several areas on the ceiling that the tape is peeling off. There's cracks. Oh, like it's okay. it's just kind of a mess. Yeah. And um, to me, it seems like if we're fixing sheetrock, we should fix all the sheetrock. Um, but what she told me was that when she had given her estimate, it had been stated that we weren't doing the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So her estimate didn't include that. Um, so I went and took some pictures for her just so she could see it, maybe give us a number and we could talk about whether we want to do that or not. Um, and she has the pictures, but she hasn't had a time mm -hmm. to do anything with them yet. Um, but if we have to cut out more sheetrock, that's going to delay mm -hmm. her. Is it? But if, if it's just a small section, you know, that you can cut out and fill in. It's a little more taping for her, but it's a lot less work right. for her and materials mm -hmm. for her. So maybe it's just like an easy, you know, like patch. And there's a chance that that board and that wiring they just did Thursday right. is going to have to get pulled back off. Was the, bulk, the bulkhead door, is that on somebody's radar to be replaced? It's I not, talked to Mike about it, I mean, but it's, it's not it. on any, like, it's, it's not within, like, any scope of work that we've, mm. you know, officially, like, given him. So I told him that it was something that we were yeah. looking to talk about having done. He's super busy. Right. He said he'd take a look Who's that? at some point. Mike, the oh, same okay. guy that yeah. came to work on the year. Yeah, it's a definitely something we should try to get done, but I don't mm -hmm. think it's yeah, going to be part of the flood repairs. But you're not counting on having that country flooring, we put flooring in there. By right. Well, they, they don't want to do it until all the painting and everything is done. Why would you do it if it's going to flood again? Why would you put in flooring? Well, it's that probably not going to flood again. Okay. You know, if you're not, if you think it's, it's all going to flood, we, why are we doing any of this? If we just think it's going to flood, I've been saying ever There's since no the, reason the to beginning put on cement that's already there to make it into a work a workable area. But you're not worried about the breathing. Or but security. I think I think I don't think that's fair. I, I think that there's Which like part's not fair. I've been trying to I think, make I think it. that there's a conversation that's going on about fix mm -hmm. the, the the mold and yeah. we're getting answers. And I think that the conversation about security is ongoing. It's not um, it's, it's a small piece, but what I'm referring to is somebody's having a floor company come in to give an estimate on replacing and putting in a hardwood flooring floor in the basement. Not a hardwood floor, a, a vinyl, a vinyl tile kind of roll, you know, that we used to call them linoleum, I don't know what they call them now. I, to make it into, I've been trying to say ever since this whole thing started, that we should take this opportunity to make that space into something usable because we need, in the future, we might need more space. What if we have to hire, say, uh, 
an assistant of some sort. And we've already committed to give a workspace to the reappraiser, and that's not going to be until at least a year from now, sometime in 2026. But it seems like, you know, the, the insurance paid $4,000 to replace the wood floor. We decided not to do that. So if we spend $3,000 on some kind of vinyl flooring, uh, it's, maybe if it floods, it would just go over it. I don't know. It's going to be glued down. I do have thoughts on that, Diana. So, because I know we had emailed back and forth a little mm -hmm. bit about it. Like, I do agree with if we're putting work into the space, we should make it usable. And that's like kind of where I'm at with the ceiling, with asking the Cayman mm -hmm. to fix mm -hmm. the problems with the ceiling. Um, but to me, like, I think, like, a concrete floor is a pretty cleanable surface. Like, I would maybe just think about painting it even, or leaving it as is. Um, I don't know why it's been such a fight to try to get a, a workspace down there, but I won't be around to do it, so. <laughs> I did put together a spreadsheet here with all the estimates that we have. Now that money from the, uh, the concrete guys, they only did half of what they estimated, right? The round knoll. They gave us an eight thousand dollar estimate for both the both sections. Both yes. sections and they only did half, so I'm thinking there will be thousands of dollars saved there. Um, the uh, uh, I, I have no idea how, how the estimates on the sheetrock and paint and everything will come out, but Robin put in a whole lot of money for furnishings and equipment. They're probably not going to need that for that. So there'll be more money there for something else. Um, and these are just, I mean, there's a lot of holes in this, but it's still something that can be filled in. You can turn them off to the. So um, I just want to. Before we move on to another, it seems like we're moving on to a different item. Um, so if we're talking about the air quality um, down there, right? That's, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And I'd like to stick with that just for the moment. Mm -hmm. So, Liz, can you make an assessment whether it's easy just to cut that out and repair yeah. that, I'll and then if it's a little more work for Nakima to take? Yeah, I'll get a hold of the guy yeah. and get more clear information on. And then it. the. Why was it was mounted for the? Um, it, does that need to be removed or did, like? I don't know. We don't know. We'll find out. Okay, because yeah. it's possible that. We need to know what area. It is. Exactly, yeah. it's possible it could just it doesn't have think, to be touched. I also think it would be. I mean, there's all this stuff in the upstairs that was taken from the basement. It wasn't flooded, but it was still you know always kind of musty down there. That might be contributing to to uh, some moldy smell. I don't even know what the original complaint was that started this whole investigation. So maybe it I should have like asked that. It do as soon as you walk into the building. The whole front of the building holds moisture. If you want any sunny day, the sun comes up, blocks the front. Mm -hmm. The whole front is just soaked. Mm. And it smells like mildew in our building. Mm. We're there all day. My nose runs constantly. Mm. I think, yeah, and all the stuff that came up from the basement hasn't even been gone through yet, so you don't even know how much of that you're going to keep. Maybe when it's all cleaned up and the stuff that you want to keep is downstairs, maybe it won't be that bad. Right. I just, I just, books and, those recommendations are not that. It's just not that. I know. They're not that big a deal. I know. We can re replace the sheetrock that needs to be replaced. We can look into the cost of an extra <laughs> or. or um, for, for the town hall offices and the other make thing a decision is from there. Uh, Mike put in these some residential looking doors. They mm -hmm. are and residential. Probably supposed to be fire doors, especially the one on the furnace room. Okay. But the doors were still there after the flood. I don't know if they're still there. Mm -hmm. Were they fire doors? I think so. Were they steel? There was a metal door down yeah, there. Yeah. Well, at the foot of the stairs going down, not it's into the furniture room. That was just a wooden no, door. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? Door. Door. Just, oh, yeah, okay. just at the bottom of the stairs. Yeah. Oh. Okay. 
No, there is one. Doesn't mean it's supposed to be. But it's mm -hmm. somebody had gone over the stairwell. It was three eight sheetrock, and somebody had gone over it with five eight sheetrock. Mm -hmm. So assuming that they were doing a firewall to like do the basement area. Oh. I have something else you guys are gonna have to think about. Is the elevator. Hmm. We had who was the one that joined for represented Nick? Was he the guy from uh, Forestville? Yes. Yeah. He is in a wheelchair, and yeah. he tried coming to the town office. Right. Well, the dirt in front of our steps elevator mm -hmm. is much lower than the platform. He could not get his wheelchair up there. Oh. And then the next problem, he opened the door and the way his wheelchair is set up with a handle over here and that bar that's in there, he can't get his wheelchair into oh. that elevator. Mm. Huh. Like there's no way. No way. We need a new elevator. Mm. I don't know if you can move that bar up that's in there. I, I don't know. Mm. But he, he could not get into that elevator. Mm. Mm. But that doesn't mean... I mean, there's got to be some standards that we have to meet for ADA, mm -hmm. and it might not satisfy everybody in every possible rig. Yeah, but a public building is supposed to be accessible well, to yeah, well, everybody. What I'm saying. Oh, really? So, yes. Oh, everybody, even if they're, well. Well, maybe that, we'd have to take a look at it, see if that bar can be moved, mm -hmm. altered or moved up. Yep have fill put in there yeah so that it's and is that something that uh, you yeah, would have to educate me here is that something that we can ask uh, the town to do or do we need to hire that out as far as bringing fall in there and i think you just put some gravel there and to ramp it up and that's what, something we could ask the town uh, your crew to do you could build a, a build a ramp yeah but mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. I mean, I think you you jump up on the concrete, right? You come off oh. the driveway, and as you enter the elevator, you're entering. Yeah, it's probably a little a foot and a half or so of yeah. concrete before you. So you, I mean, there's several ways to fix it. You can fix it with just some gravel. You could build mm -hmm. a wooden ramp mm -hmm. that would stay structural mm -hmm. uh, with pressure treated. I think the quickest and easiest is probably gravel. I haven't seen it, but I'm, I'm just visualizing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't. But that doesn't fix the bar no. issue. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Who was that person? Remember we were having trouble with the elevator before, and you, I think Brandy, got a hold of somebody, and we thought we had to replace the whole thing, but it turned out it was just a part. Mm -hmm. um, would that person be somebody we could reach out to? So I'm actually going to reach out to who inspected it from the state to see okay. if we can remove it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's a handlebar. So it helps. That's the only side that bar's on. So and it was blocking this guy from mm -hmm. getting in. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sounds like there's an, there's an easy fix in there somewhere. I'm hoping. Yeah. Hopefully. And what's the boards um, would like to do about the ramping up? Is that something we can ask Alfie and his crew to do? I would agree to that. And is that mm -hmm. something you'd be willing to do? Yeah. It's, it sounds like a little bit over two of gravel. Okay. Packaged. You know, compacted in there, good shape, so it's solid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you tried nice. to build something wood, it would just get plowed away. In the yeah. Rain. <laughs> yeah. No, we can we can put some gravel mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Al. All right. So, Liz, you're gonna touch base with Walter. Wesley. Wesley. Yeah and find out about um, that. Can you also ask about uh, air scrubber recommendations? Yep. And mm. like what they look like, what that looks like? What's an air scrubber? I think it's like a filter, a an air oh. filter. Oh. Yeah. So, and that, I think, um, Danny, you want to go on? Now we can kind of round this out to the town office flood repairs yeah. and the spreadsheet that mm -hmm. you created. Mm -hmm. 
Well, what I was trying to figure out is what we can do that we hadn't planned on because some of these estimates were high, but they're also possible that some of the estimates were low. But what I did here in the middle is insurance approved amount. Those are the amounts. The $31,981 is what we have. And um, if some of these things come up more, then maybe we there would be something to ask FEMA. Some of the things, for example, a heating system, we decided to spend the extra $1,500 to um, go to gas. That's really not something we can expect FEMA or anybody else to pay for. But, uh, uh, like I said, I think the, the concrete floor should save us some money because they only did half and they paid for the whole thing. And they paid for $4,000 for the wood floor that we decided not to do, but if we wanted to do some vinyl instead, the estimate was $3,000. Uh, and I actually think that, I don't think those vinyl floors are glued, maybe they are, but like, I don't think that these are glued to the slab. So in the, the Montpelier floods, mm -hmm. when that happened, the, the, a lot of those places that had vinyl floors, mm -hmm. owners were picking them up, washing mm -hmm. them off, and mm -hmm. putting them back down. Mm -hmm. um, just, mm -hmm. it, but if you glue them down, that's a whole other story. Mm -hmm. It does look like it did say pressure sensitive adhesive uh, on this list of. They do have ones that kind of float. They also around. talked to, talked about. He wasn't sure. I mean, it seems like a brand new. Floor covering would be flat, but he said there might be some places where they need to do some more flattening out, sanding or something. So the estimate here for uh, prep subfloor is needed, uh, $1,700. He said that might be high. It depends on what, what they do, what they need to do to prepare it. But if nobody wants to do it. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll have to vote on it at some point. Well, Diane, you know. I guess just to throw it out, my thought on it is if we were to skip the flooring and just live with a concrete floor, whether it's painted or unpainted, to me, it's still a totally usable, cleanable space. You could still use it for mm -hmm. an office. Yeah. But I mm -hmm. feel like that 3000 or $4,000 could go towards maybe like insulating in the basement where there's heat loss. It could go towards windows. The, are needed upstairs. Like, I just feel like there's other areas. There's windows in that basement, too. And, or in the basement. Even windows. windows in that basement. In the hallway, they don't even close. There's plastic on them. I noticed the, the plastic. Don't close. Yeah. The so windows going up. The overlook. Oh, the one. 14. The one that goes. There's three of them right through there. Those need to be replaced. Oh, those little, those little ones, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, this one's a big one going down. The big one also. It's a big one that's not yeah. even open. You can see. I mean, there's yeah. plastic, but it's Yeah, I'd like to see enough out. money to replace, what is two, three, four, five total of the big windows. Well, well this is a working document, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is. All right. Did you get that copy I sent over to you? Mm -hmm. Did Skip get one? Oh, we only sent one. But I sent one. We, we both looked at it here. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, how much money has the town received? 30. Is it, is it received $31,981? Yeah. Confident is everyone that the uh, repairs won't exceed thirty-one thousand dollars, or do you believe that the repairs will exceed thirty-one thousand dollars? The only thing I can write for is that amount of money that exceeds $31,981.18. Can you say that again? You, the only money I can ask FEMA to give to the town is mm -hmm. that amount of money in excess of $31,981.18. Mm -hmm. 
I, I, I don't, I think we can do it all. Um, but the reason I wrote this up was because I was wanting to show which areas there was a over, probably overage in, because the insurance company, I guess, is not going to want any money back. And what we could do well, we was. Wouldn't want to kill <laughs> I think I'm being really dense or having a hard time understanding your question. You so, see, so, so the insurance company, maybe I phrased it wrong, the insurance company has paid the town $31,981. Yeah, we okay. have that money. Okay, so you have that money. Yeah. How confident are you, or not, that your costs will? Not exceed thirty-one thousand dollars, or will exceed thirty-one thousand dollars. So we, Robin hasn't. And the reason why I ask is, I can split up. If, if you believe that the repairs to the town office is just the repairs, not talking anything new, okay, just the repairs. If they won't exceed thirty-one thousand dollars, I'll take the town offices off that project and just move forward with the replacement of the uh, speed sign, which is like $5,000. Because the thing yeah. that's not covered is the volunteer work, and I don't know uh, how much I already I... quantified that. What? I already have quantified that. Is it a lot? Oh, I have good work. It's been <laughs> since like last September when I yeah. did that last. <laughs> yeah. But it's... So that would be something that would put us over. No, FEMA will pay for that. Whether or not we need any of this? This is separate and distinct from that. Oh, okay. FEMA will pay for the volunteer work oh. on a per hour basis okay. for volunteers that came in and cleaned up the place. Okay. Thanks. And that's entirely different from this. Mm -hmm. FEMA will pay for those costs. Oh, okay. Is it a hardship for you to leave this open so that if we do go over, we can apply for FEMA funds for that amount? Well, you would have to write for an extension. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So you'd have right. to go through that effort. Right. And, and that's, and you need a timeline and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you have some level mm -hmm. of confidence that you won't go over $31,000, again, I could take this part of the project and tell FEMA to forget about that part of the project. Just move forward with processing the speed radar sign. Mm. From here, it doesn't look like it's going to exceed $31,000 from what I see here. Well, especially with this like six thousand dollars that uh, Robin has put in here for shelves and cabinets. Yeah, none of those have even been ordered right. to go in downstairs yet for voting for. Right, so. but but that's a lot of money. Well, have you been pricing any any of this stuff? A while ago we did. Yeah, it hasn't been. But you knew we did. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And the sheetrock and the inst and the paint and the doors. If that doesn't, I'd be surprised if that doesn't go over twenty three hundred. But yeah, um, it's probably close to that, or maybe a hair over. Did we get any a bill for my um, beer right yet? Oh, here right now. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And so far, he's hung the sheetrock and the door. And John Trim, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think yeah, he's true. done everything he planned on for that scope of yeah. work. Yeah. Um, that's not including anything with the bulkhead or right. Right. separate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. So mm -hmm. he was one five seven six four four, and I think I was a thousand. I can't remember. Okay. So 2500 So what do you oh, need to know, Skip, when we think sooner and then later? Yeah. Yeah. It's the same issue as with the town bridges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we'll need to make, make a decision as a, is it, it's a board decision, I guess? Uh, uh, that's a question about what, uh, what we feel is priority here, and then we can let Skip know mm -hmm. yeah. so where we'll end up. Mm -hmm. Just the final billing amounts you have here, I just added them up and they're 
$12,800. So if you believe that there's $19,000 worth of work that still has to be done. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think so either, but is that including like furnishings, equipment? I mean, what is, I don't know what the furnishings are, desks, bookcases. Well, it's my, my cabinet, it will be a cabinet sort of like that wooden one right there, but it will be okay. metal. Gotcha. And I have all my um, election stuff and the envelopes and... Okay. Like the one that you, the one that did survive. Blood. There is one already, right? But I don't think Maybe it's going to fit one. in that room. Because the floor is so high. <coughs> but the floor is not... Really? You haven't walked from that main floor out into the furnace room, Diane? Yeah, but I didn't notice any difference. What is it, like, like four inches? At least four inches. You're kidding me, really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's a lot of concrete. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. All right. That could, yeah. Interesting. But anyways... Hopefully it is. I mean, it didn't go up to the, well, I don't remember if it went up to the ceiling before. I'll have to measure. Yeah. So anyway, a couple, you're thinking a couple more of those and yes. then some shelving. Well, it seems like we could turn that to very good Yeah. So are we comfortable? Can I feel Well, you don't have to let me know. Okay. Tonight. Yeah. Okay. In the next couple of weeks. The, uh, I think the fire doors are are worth investigating. I had um, talked to Mike about when we were talking about the fact that the door wouldn't fit because the concrete had come up. Um, I had talked to him about maybe trying with a grinder to just cut the door down mm -hmm. and use the same door. Um, in he made the call to go with new doors just to be quicker, mm -hmm. just to try to get it done. Yeah. Um, but if we do need a metal door there, we could consider trying that. Because we already own it? Because we already own mm -hmm. it. It's in the basement. It's just now four inches too tall mm -hmm. for the space. It's the old door? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wonder if the jams need to be. Right. Also, I think fire doors would sometimes oh, like metal well, jams. I didn't have that. I'm pretty sure yeah, it was just like a wood casing, mm -hmm. if I remember right. Well, is it, right. is that a Paul question? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think so. I think Paul could probably tell us what's required. I'm sure I know what the answer's going to be. Is that <laughs> How much could it, the, the insurance, the original insurance in Chester put in for solid oak doors that were about $500 a piece. But, I, you know, I don't know where it came up with that. <laughs> I mean, that might be also considered a fire door just since it's burn time. So, um, one of us needs to talk to Paul? Sure. Oh, uh, I can make a solid three out of my phone calls. So I can call Paul. Okay. Thank oh. you. Okay. Really fire doors. Okay. So, um, I think that a SAG, we can approve bills and payroll orders later. Yeah. Um, unless anybody has any discreet, we can move on to these kind of larger governance issues yeah, or conversations. Well, I think, I mean, it's up to me, or not up to me, but it's up to the board. I, I would um, value input from the other mm. folks here yeah. as well. Um, it doesn't have, we don't have to spend, mm -hmm. it could be a 10 minute conversation, okay. five minute conversation, whatever anybody mm -hmm. wants. But um, I think one of the bigger questions uh, is whether Woodbury would benefit from a five-person select board mm. as opposed to a three-person select board. Mm. Yeah. I have my own opinions, but which is yes. <laughs> but um, I could be convinced otherwise. <laughs> if people have, a, you know, there's ups and downs. Other ideas. Yeah. Pros and cons. Certainly yeah. pros and cons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this thing from VLCP, it just really talked about the process. The voters have to approve it, and if the voters, if the select board decides to put it on the warning, that has to be done like in January, maybe, um, if not December. But yeah, I'd like to hear if anybody else has any ideas. 
Well, I know when I was on the board, it was a lot of work. Yeah. But fortunately, I had somewhat retired, so I had the time to put into mm -hmm. it. And uh, I'm somewhat computer literate, so that helped a lot. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Make no mistake about that. And with a five person board, I suppose, with the right people, you could spread the work out. Mm -hmm. But uh, Michael and I, and the other iterations of the boards we served on, survived and uh, lived to tell the tale. Mm -hmm. But it was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I guess I think, you know, it certainly can kind of go on as is, and things can function. But I wonder, with an extra four hands, you know, if we went to a five-person board, mm -hmm. whether things would function better. So that, and I, and I realize that there would be challenges. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I mean, quite honestly, Diana takes on the lion's share of all all the work. Um, I think Liz and I are trying to trying to take on a little bit more, but um, I'm finding it very difficult. Um, and this is. This is way, I'm on this Hazen board, mm -hmm. and this is way more work than the Hazen board. You want to run for Hazen board again? I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I haven't decided whether to run for this so, again. So I guess, um, yeah, that, that was mm -hmm. my, that's my thinking on, on the issue. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And you would have to, hopefully, the uh, people who are elected persons four and five, you know, bring something to the table. Yeah. In terms of skill yeah, it's always a crapshoot yeah. when you're talking about t town meeting. Yeah. You know, well, it's like all years we gotta try to find people before me, and like they do in the presidential election, right? Run, run around trying to find people to vote for people you want to win. <laughs> yeah. Is it worth doing with a survey? Ask the, ask the town's people. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I mean, I think that, that would happen at town. They would have to approve it at town meeting, anyways, right? Yeah, but it would be good to talk, yeah, have people talking about it beforehand. Survey, then you might save you hmm. some time and yeah. effort. Mm -hmm. Or put some questions out on the porch forum, maybe, to see if people have ideas or thoughts. That would be a good and pretty easy way to reach out. Mm -hmm. Easier than putting together a survey. Yeah. Right. So just like a post um, at the Woodbury Select Board is interested in feedback regarding mm -hmm. the possibility mm -hmm. of um, I'll put together a post and I'll bring it to the next meeting and okay. then we can uh, <coughs> You can approve it for me to <laughs> post it. I think that'd be great. And then maybe we could also post it on the Facebook community page. Okay. You know, I struggled with that last time. But it'll be a really it infor happened. informal. I mean, maybe it's yeah. going to be, I think, a little bit difficult yeah. to tell because I think. Like, who's, people may not respond. Well, it's going to be still a little bit anecdotal, right? Because we'll get right. responses, but we're not going to have any real hard data. Mm -hmm. Like, right. this many people feel like it's a good idea, or this many people think it's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I think it's just going to be a general feeling, like I kind of feel like. Wouldn't get yeah. that until you but if we get uh, responses well, and they sound like positive towards it, it would maybe be an indication that we should spend time looking okay. into it further, mm -hmm. rather than... You could mm -hmm. find someone who could put together something like a survey monkey. Mm -hmm. Oh. Application like we did for the town plan. John could do that. John Reed could do that. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. So that would be have to go out to people who have emails or just people who are on front porch forum. It's, it's like a link, right? You put it on front porch mm -hmm. forum and people okay. can click on yeah. it yeah. and fill yeah. it out. That's an idea. We've also yeah, they can be print downs in the office that people can come grab, fill out. Mm -hmm. so I'll, um, so it's not just on email. I'll touch base with John. You know what? I'll touch base with John. Oh, okay. And I'll put together a post. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully by the next meeting we will have something for the board to approve. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Sure. Any other uh, comments or feedback about that? I'm thinking. I think Walden still has three members, but every other town around here that I can think of has five. 
Plainfield just went to five last year, and they've been having an awful time with with uh, board members in and out. And but I think they finally stabilized, and I think they have a couple of good good members and a couple others that are willing to run again at town meeting. I think Worcester might still be three. Really? Oh. Uh, unless they changed in the last few years. Um, so the, what, if that did happen, and if we just did decide to go forward, then you can um, put it all, also put it on the warning to elect people at town meeting. I don't know if there's another option, if you can just wait to let the select board appoint. Well, I guess or, the or have, or have a special town meeting. Do we need would we need a special town meeting to decide to change the select board size? Yeah, or just I mean, town meeting's coming right up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we could just put it on the agenda for a town meeting. Uh, yeah. By January. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't be able to vote anybody in then, right? Well, yeah, you could. If you if you put it on the warning. The warning would say, if such and such article passes, then have your elections. But that doesn't give people much warning mm. of whether or not they want to run. So it might be nicer to have a special town meeting, but then you're mm. stuck in a limbo where you have three members of a five-member board, and that means you can only take action if they all agree, which we well, usually do anyway. So. Okay, <laughs> would we like have a meeting and say we're going to move to a five-member board, but not till town meeting day, so that that way the we don't have to struggle with like fewer members than there should be until then. Like, couldn't you know what I mean? Could we make the decision to move to a five-member board? But not until the date of. We can't town meeting. make that decision. It has to be voted yeah. on. No, I know. I'm talking oh. about doing it at a special town meeting. Like, oh. could we put it to the public as a vote, but have it be like a vote to be post dated? Like, they'll make the decision at the public meeting, uh -huh. but it doesn't take effect mm -hmm. until town meeting. Yeah, day. I don't know. We'll have to read that through here and see, to see whether that's an option. It would make most sense to have a spe you know have a special town meeting, but mm -hmm. after after town meeting, like another month later, so you'd only be in limbo for a month or so. To and then that way, you wouldn't have to worry about somebody voted in there that you didn't want. Right. Sometimes. You wouldn't have that month or two, so you could go out and yeah. politics think, think the about person it. That you yeah. want. People could think about it. <laughs> well, <laughs> we do that beforehand, anyways. <laughs> I mean, you gotta. I mean, yeah. Leaving it up to town meeting is sometimes a crapshoot. Well, one of the things I like about the idea of a five-member board is we could get a broader, like, a wider spectrum of people. You know, more opinions right. would be yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. And then you have a few other uh, discussion items here, Diana. Yeah. Um, yeah. The question about town treasurer, I, um, I just think when you're trying to convince somebody to take this job, um, and they vo might volunteer and then have to be up for election in three months, you know that might be kind of off-putting. On the other hand, when this question has come up before. I don't know if Brandy ever had to deal with it, but I know Marcia always said she didn't want to be appointed. She didn't want to be responsible to the select board. She wanted to be responsible to the voters. And that's kind of how I felt when I was a town clerk, too. I didn't want to be appointed. But anyways, I did, but I can see why. Like when we went from a one-year election to a three-year term, that made it a lot yeah. um, easier for somebody to think they had some kind of job stability. And so got it. Before that, it was every every year someone could just take a shot at you. <laughs> What's your opinion about that? Um, I think the three year is is good. You're not sitting there going, "What'd you just train me for?" If I'm up every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
I had somebody come in and inquire today. Ooh. I'm really hoping they don't stop back this week because it's just I don't have time. Mm. Um, but I'm hoping. Oh, good. So. How do you guys feel in general just um, being elected officials versus appointed? Does it ever does it ever make you feel like you don't have job security because at town meeting, you know, you, you've put in all this time but people could vote for somebody else or do you feel okay about the To me it's it's the town. Mm -hmm. right. They should have the the say mm -hmm. of who gets in there. Yeah. Instead of the three or the five that's sitting on the select board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that idea too. I just wondered if it, you know, how it feels when you're in the position, if it makes Well, there's sense. somebody out there better right. to do the position than I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Clearly. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, All right. Oh, good. Any other, uh, anybody else want to weigh in? Michael? Oh, well, I think with the appointment, I mean, there are towns that are having a hard time finding somebody to be mm -hmm. elected as town treasurer. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't know if you can elect somebody who doesn't live in the town to be a town clerk or a town treasurer. Um, um, so they're well, actually hire, somebody. hiring somebody mm -hmm. uh, who isn't a town resident mm -hmm. and, um, and they're appointed. That's a good point. Yeah. Can they be... So just hypothetical. Let's say a town meeting, town clerk or the town treasurer, no one runs, no one wants it, the position's empty, the board appoints someone. Can they appoint them for a term of three years or can they only appoint no. them to the next? Uh, to finish. So, uh, right. Yeah. So I'm a three year term. My term yeah. is not up until next year. Yeah. Ooh. It's got to stagger so that there's not two new people in that office. You've got to mm -hmm. have somebody yeah. who knows a little bit of the history mm -hmm. to keep the office going. Yeah. I guess what I mean is, um, you know, when you think about trying to fill that position mm -hmm. and presumably let's say nobody wants the town treasurer's mm -hmm. position from town, but we need to fill that position by appointing maybe somebody from out of town. But mm -hmm. it sounds like you can't elect someone from out of town, so that would be a one-year job, which is not very I don't know attractive to one year job or not. I don't think you can elect somebody from out of town. Right. I mean, if you hire somebody to be a town treasurer, um, it could be until they're, you know, ready to, to stop That's working. I don't, yeah. I don't think there's, well, like, terms mm -hmm. for somebody who's appointed. So I mean, we wouldn't have to hire necessarily somebody. hire somebody else the following town meeting. No. Nothing. Okay. Not that I mean, I don't know. You that wouldn't for sure. have to appoint them every like Alfie. He gets appointed every year. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I, I can see that being a real problem. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of. T I mean, I again, I don't know how much, but I know that a lot of towns have had a hard time finding somebody to mm -hmm. be like a town treasurer, mm -hmm. um, and they've actually hired someone. Um, and, um, but I don't know if it's for if they have to reappoint them every year. Mm. Uh, yeah, again, you know, the other thing is the first appointing yeah. Um, mm. yeah. yeah, I think that would be. Then you'd mm. have to pay them a livable wage <laughs> and benefits, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, health, and, uh, vacations, <clears throat> things like that. Well, depending on how, yeah. If you're, going to hire, if you're going to hire someone to be your town treasurer, you want to be sure they have the credentials, the mm -hmm. accounting mm -hmm. credentials, so that they can do the job. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you'd have to pay them a, you know, the going rate for an accountant mm -hmm. plus benefits, whatever that is. You know? Unless we find somebody who wants a part-time job and. That's has benefits for you. That's a unicorn. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. But you had some interest. We've been able to do that so far. Yeah. Yeah. You had some interest, though? This, you said somebody came in that was interested? Yes. I'm going to cross my fingers. Somebody in from town? The sooner to fill this position, I'm looking at December and being done. Oh. Um, I, I, this has gone on for a year. I, mm -hmm. I said this last December. <laughs> So yeah, mm. I have no health insurance, and now I have to cancel stuff that I've had scheduled. That yeah, 
<coughs> so I need health insurance. Mm. So yeah. So the sooner yeah, the better. Well thanks for hanging in there as long as you have. Well no, this is my town too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I guess we will, unless there's any other discussion to happen around those things, yeah. we'll approve bills and payroll orders, um, and then we will adjourn. No, we have to. We're going to oh, sorry. Session. I'd yep. like to. Mo I'll move that we enter an executive session. For personnel issues. Yeah. Yeah. Three one BSA three. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. We are entering executive session.